what we term it as um, cardiac arrhythmia because you don't have the normal rhythm when the graph is drawn you can see it going up and down in a very undulating effect it doesn't have the normal effect or rhythm that it's supposed to be so the prevention focus is increasing on prevention of anxiety disorders there is tentative evidence to support the use of cognitive behavioral therapy so CBT can be a form of preventative measure as I was saying to the teachers that sometimes you have a word with the pupil with the student so that or lecturer have a word with a student so that you can have some sort of suggestions you can have some sort of questions and then play around with what you have and make sure that you communicate effectively with that individual so that you can ascertain what their fears and phobia and attacks and panics are so that you can help them come out of it so that is the preventative you know um, approach to solving anxiety disorders before it gets to the clinical stage whereby you're going to be um, prescribed medication and all that so CBT anyone can do CBT I know that there are professionals that are trained and um, psychologists to do that but you can as well communicate with that individual as a, a tutor or as a lecturer or as a teacher in uh, a secondary school a primary school to have a talk, talking therapy with the child and that can go a long way to help the child is going to prevent the child from escalating into something worse so the diagnosis anxiety disorders are often debilitating chronic conditions which can be present from an early age or begin suddenly after a triggering effect or a trigger a triggering event so anything at all can cause an anxiety disorder if you experience something that you are not normally you know um, used to like if you experience an, um, an accident horrible graphic scenery of you know beheaded um, passengers or amputated passengers or very graphic scenery that is not really a good thing to see it can trigger your anxiety disorder and you can experience somebody passing out or even death it can trigger your anxiety disorder or when you experience maybe um, you've been dismissed or somebody has been dismissed or that person is relative or relative to you or something like that anything that is not a good news can also trigger your anxiety disorder and that can be chronic if it's really traumatic that is why we have something we call post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD that our military honorable men go through after service because what they see and what they experience what they what they observed in the line of duty is very very graphic and that affects them when they retire and even some of them don't even retire but it starts hunting them and they have to go for checkup they have to go for support they have to go for help so events can trigger the onset or early onset of anxiety disorder they are prone to flare up at times of high stress and are frequently accompanied by physiological symptoms such as headache sweating muscle spasms tachycardia palpitation and hypertension which is in some cases lead to fatigue or even exhaustion so some people go through all these and exhibit demonstrate show 
physical symptoms. Some of them sweat, some of them have headaches, some of them have palpitations, some of them have panic attacks. So it depends on that individual and the physical symptoms that they go through. So it is very critical that in the early stages of that um, individual, if anybody is around as a tutor or a lecturer or a parent or a teacher, please try the talking therapy first and as a base, as a first aid for that individual so that it might help the person to come out of it. It's like the scientists say that when you see a person lying down, you give them CPR. So that is the kind of CPR we give the individuals that have got early onset of anxiety disorder so that it might help them, might go a long way to help them. Some come out of it without extra um, individual or professional support or help. So in casual discourse, the words anxiety or fear are often used interchangeably in clinical usage. They have distinct meanings. Anxiety is defined as an unpleasant emotional state. Let me repeat that. Anxiety is defined as an unpleasant emotional state for which the cause we are reading page 121 we're going to 122 is either not readily identified or perceived to be uncontrollable or unavoidable whereas fear is an emotional and psychological response to a recognized external threat So fear, as I, I've defined it in my own terms, that like false evidence appearing real is a response, psychological response, to a recognized external threat. So you might be in your room and hear a loud noise. You might have some panic attack that will put you into the state of fear, right? But anxiety, as is, um, is described is an emotional unpleasant emotional state so there's a difference between the unpleasant emotional state that can be uncontrollable or unavoidable than a response to an external threat so in actual fact the fear is like a, a, a response it's like a reflex action to an external stimuli if somebody opens your door without you knowing and shout, you might have a panic attack. That is fear. You are responding to that reaction or that external threat. But anxiety is something that is internalized, right? It's an emotional state that sometimes can be uncontrollable. So it's internalized, but it's not externalized in terms of reaction in the respect of what anxiety or in the respect of fear so fear is an external reaction and then anxiety is an emotional reaction so we don't see anxiety but we see fear if a vehicle runs so fast and pass by you when you are in the wrong lane or you are walking not walking in the right pedestrian lane you will jump off. The jumping off is a reaction of that external threat, right? So that is called fear. But anxiety is when that event has passed and you are still in that panic state. You are still in that traumatic state that is internalized, that is emotionally, you know, disturbing. So it's unavoidable, uncontrollable. And it's an emotional state so nobody can see you when you are anxious unless you verbalize it unless you spit it out or unless you tell somebody that i'm going through this condition i'm going through this emotions that i need some kind of support 
you understand my point so that is the difference between emotions and fear